really interesting. I was listening to a clip on mental health and the therapist with about 30 years of experience was asked the question, what is the one thing that prevents a person from being whole, complete and mentally healthy? And he said, the most important element of mental health is you have to love yourself. That caught my attention because it just goes to show how amazing the gospel is in that we are basically soaking in God's love every day. Now, look what Jesus did to us when we believe in him. Uh, it is Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He recreated us in Christ for good works. Now, good things, what does that say about our inner person? And masterpiece, how good is our heavenly father? He recreated us a new, righteous, holy, blameless. So now we can love ourselves. We're the new selves. Remember, the old self died. He continues and says, if we receive unconditional love, that, that sounds familiar because that's what we've been saying all the time. The Greek word agape means godly love, unconditional love, love on a higher level with the belief. I'm glad he says believe because it's a belief system. We are okay. In gospel terms, it means we are righteous. We are recreated good. And I'm happy he said independent of our mistakes. It is so important to understand that our mistakes don't undo our sonship or daughtership. Again, the gospel is the complete solution. Someone said the gospel is the most perfect belief system because we renew our minds to the perfect love and security of God. So that's why we debunk misinterpreted Bible passages, because we then establish ourselves in the gospel of love and grace and can experience the love of God on a deeper level. For sure, it heals us. It heals us spiritually and emotionally. Now, here's a Bible passage in John 15 about the vine branches relationship that was to come. Now, Jesus speaking, I am the true vine and my father, the vine dresser, is such a beautiful picture of us connected, secured in the vine, receiving the nourishment that we need. But because of misinterpretations and erroneous preaching, verse 2 and 6 causes upset. And you will see this translation says he cuts off every branch. <laughs> not such a happy picture. And then verse 6 says, if, everyone, if anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out. <laughs> Ouch. That's also a little bit less rosy for some. Now let's look at the solution. The solution is in verse 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me. So abides, abide means to live. The saying goes, my humble abode, which means my humble house. That's where I live, my location. So Jesus was saying, make sure I'm your spiritual location and the source. Because for without me, you can do nothing. This is what it's all about. Either you are in Christ or not in Christ. Either you have the source or you don't have the source. In Christ, we can produce fruit because he's the supply. Without the supply, we can't. It will be self-righteousness. So let's read it from verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch on me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Now there's a footnote that takes away. It says, either takes away or lifts up. It's a 50-50 chance in translation. So vines, they always have wires and structures supporting the branches. Branches that are down in the dirt have to be lifted up and clean. Now, choosing between takes away or cuts off and lifts up, we have to ask ourselves what is genuinely the truth. We cannot accept an interpretation that contradicts multiple scriptures upon scriptures, confirming the gospel of by grace through faith only. Think about it. Without our Savior, there is no gospel. Because then you are your own Savior and Jesus died in vain. So it's very clear he invites us into the true vine. He's saying, I am the real deal. I am the source. If you have the source, you can produce fruit. So I will go with lifts up and cleans. Because if it's cut off, then you have to produce yourself and be your own savior. And we can't produce anything anyway because we're not the source. <laughs> we are not the vine. Without the vine, you can do zilts. <laughs> That's the whole answer to this passage. 
There is another interpretation that's also um, maybe acceptable. It's in uh, Romans 11. The, the context of the passage is Israel, the Jews, um, Paul is speaking. He says, if some branches, the Jews were broken off and you, the Gentiles, grafted in. So note, Jews broken off, Gentiles grafted in. So this implies that traditionally, the Jews were traditionally in the vine. So let's read it again. Every branch in me. Now remember, the people listening to Jesus there were mainly Jews. His calling was mainly Jews. He was respecting that they were traditionally in the vine. And remember, the, Jesus and the Father are one. He was saying, come into the true vine. Without the source, you can't produce any fruit and you will be cut off. Now, I don't care <laughs> which interpretation it is because I'm happy either way. I am in my Savior. He is my source. I'm a happy camper. <laughs> I'm camping in the vine. <laughs> Although I do lean towards uh, lifts up because the very next verse talks about cleaning. While every branch in me that does bear fruit, he prunes. Now, I'm also happy with prunes because all thinking patterns Old coping mechanisms, old ways of the flesh have to go. We are way better off without them. They won't fulfill. So prunes also has a footnote and it says it could be he prunes or he cleans. Now I will go with clean because the next verse says you are already clean and that already means it's connected to the previous verse. So my heart loves this picture of the loving vine dresser. Sounds familiar? <laughs> who lifts up and supports the branches and caringly cleans them. So next verse, he who abides in me and I in him, we are united with Christ. As unbelievable as it sounds, he recreated us perfectly and united us with him. If anybody does not abide or does not live in me, doesn't have the source, he is cast out. So I don't care whether it's cast out, thrown away, chucked away, obliterated, <laughs> because I am in my savior and I am on the rock. My house is on the rock. That's my location. <laughs> uh, in the past, I was worried about losing my salvation because mainly re religion is turning this abide, which actually means location, into a work, a performance. You have to abide in the morning, you have to abide in the evening. It's ridiculous. You can't make yourself part of him. He himself makes you part of himself. It's called the finished work of Christ. And you don't have to produce. Because remember, we are not the source. We just bear it. We, it flows through us. So our location and our recreated identity is in Christ. And yes, we can walk according to the flesh for a given moment. But that is secondary to our identity. It cannot override our sonship and daughtership. So how can we be sure of our salvation? This verse, very popular. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. That's a not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, some people make this temporary life. Two or three weeks down the track to make mistakes, sin, whatever. And you, this becomes temporary life. Maybe God made a mistake. No, God didn't make a mistake. It is eternal life. Jesus says here, and I give them eternal life. Our eternal lives started when at rebirth. And even death, the new covenant doesn't talk about death. It talks about sleep coming in from one face to the other. Shall never perish. Now, last time I checked the dictionary, never means never. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Now, do we believe Christ that nobody or nothing can snatch us out of his hand? Here's the words of Paul. He came to this point. I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God. Now, here's the question. Are you convinced? There's no more cutting and chucking and burning. Thanks for watching.